Good morning, Connections. We begin a new week. Glad to have you with us. I am hoping that we will be spurred to a greater faith, a more confident faith, a more authentic faith through studying James. James was introduced to us as we wrestled with pride versus humility and the need to stop doing things the way the world does them and adopt the ways of God. So James, we believe, is the brother, the half-brother of Jesus himself, younger brother who perhaps didn't have much stock in what Jesus was speaking while Jesus was alive, but became the, uh, the head of the church in Jerusalem in the years following Jesus' death and resurrection. And he was said to have great faith. But it appears that James looked over the early church and was concerned that the early church was becoming very similar to the system that preceded it, which was the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the teachers of the law. The hypocrisy of man seeping into this new and, and emerging salvation. And so that's where we find ourselves. Because that hypocrisy is something that is more dangerous to the church, more destructive to the church, than any of the other things that we speak of. This idea that we can continue to have a relationship with the world and act however we would like and have a relationship with God. James looked out on the landscape of the early church said, if, if you truly have a relationship with God, why is your, your life not reflecting that? Why do you continue to go about your life as, as you did before? Where is the transformation? Where is the kindness and the love? Where is the, the resemblance to, to how Jesus walked? Faith needs to be more than just words. Faith needs to be more than just, I believe. Faith is, is, should interrupt your life and, and set it on a new path. If we're just incorporating in these beliefs and, and making God the right size to fit into our lives, we fail. So James is emphasizing and reminding the church that there's much more to being a follower of Christ than just by words. It's by words and deeds. So that's what we're going to spend a lot of our time on. We're going to focus on this letter that James has written, likely to the Jewish believers in that those earliest of years in the new church. We're going to start in James 2, 14. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? We have opportunities each and every day to interact and care for and encourage. And instead, we just go about our business. Which reflects to what we've been speaking about over the last week and yesterday on Sunday. 
which is we get so centered on ourselves. And if it doesn't matter to us, if it isn't moving us forward, if it isn't accomplishing the goals that we have set for ourselves, if, if we aren't getting to where we want to be, then it has very little value. Living by the words that Jesus speaks of loving God with everything and loving your neighbor as yourself is more challenging than we realize. It means being called to go out of our way to care for others. It means not inviting the world into the church. Agreeing that we are going to share God's heart and that we are going to, to do our best to invite the Holy Spirit in each and every day so what God desires to accomplish through us can be accomplished. Those are the challenges for the early church. Those are the things that were going to stifle its growth and squander this opportunity to share salvation with the world. You and I are the illustration that that didn't happen. That the early church heard James's words and responded with a more authentic faith. So we know that it can be done. We know from our history that, that it is possible to truly live a life that honors God and expands the mission to those that need salvation. Now it's up to us to do it. Do it for the sake of ourselves so that we experience real faith and do it for the sake of all those that we might reach with our authentic faith versus turning them away with our hypocrisy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. You are a gracious God. You are a patient God. Forgive us, Lord, for wasting your time, wasting your gift. Too often we're looking to stand pat and remain comfortable and find our spot and ride out the storm. You are calling us to a greater faith, a faith that moves mountains, a faith that changes lives, a faith that transforms communities. We desire to have authentic faith, ones that, a faith that can be seen, a faith that can be measured. A greater faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, see you back here. We'll continue in our study of James. We are going to take a little bit of a field trip back into the Gospels um, midweek, but uh, we're going to stay with James for most of the week. Glad you're here. See you tomorrow. I love you. I miss you. Please. Be good.